Good evening, everyone. Another mixer, another pre-tenders mixer. It's a five-box prism and contenders basketball mixer. Pick your team number two from jazbeescasebreaks.com. A big thank you to all of these fine people here on the ninth. Dave Barrows, Last Bot Mojo, Pacers. There's everyone else. Thank you for getting in. Thanks for giving this a shot. Good luck. I think we're going to start with... Uh, with these retail hanging rack pack packs first. This is with those are the ones with the red, white, and blue. The red, white, and blue parallels. All right, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, for entertainment purposes only, we like to discuss a little uh, hoops wagering. I have to tell you, my January has been pretty terrible since the beginning of the year. Been not making the right picks. But tonight, tonight I got lucky. I stuck with my formula through thick and thin. And tonight has been a success. So I just if I just go on a little bit of a run, I'll be back, back into positive money. Boys and girls, I took Washington, the Wizards, plus 125. Took a heavy favorite in Brooklyn at minus 400. Grizz, plus 137. They were hosting the Spurs. Put a dollar on Cleveland, plus 900, in case something wacky happened. I always try to keep that there. Utah, heavy favorites, minus 380. Portland, minus 450. Another heavy, heavy favorite. And then uh, we got the Lakers minus 121, and they are leading by looks like leading by 10 now. F plenty of time left in this game, though. Four minutes left. So hopefully this will be the start of my January turnaround. Dust off your uh, your Zubach autographs, ladies and gentlemen. He's been getting a lot more minutes lately. All right, let's get you some final scores here, boys and girls. A lot of packs to open here. Some final scores. We've got Dallas Mavericks. They beat the Suns 104-94. to 94. Luka Doncic with 30 points. Six rebounds and five assists. He is the real deal holy field. Rashawn Holmes was a top performer for the Suns. He had 16 points, six rebounds, five assists. In Utah, Jazz beat the Magic 106 to 93. Donovan Mitchell, 33 points, four rebounds, and seven assists. Donovan Mitchell, a kind of slow start to the season. Ladies and gentlemen, but I feel like him and the Jazz are kind of getting back, uh, kind of getting getting back into the the swing of things. Although they started off this game slow, they had to come back to beat the Magic, outscoring them twenty eight eighteen in the fourth quarter. They needed that. DJ Augustine led the way for the Magic twenty three three and six. This is all for Wednesday, January 9th, In case you're watching this many weeks later, Trailblazers. Uh, had no problems with the Bulls. I guess early on, the first quarter, they had a problem. But then they gradually pulled away. They beat them 124 to 112 comfortably. Celtics destroyed in Boston. They beat the Pacers 135 to 108. Wizards beat the Sixers 123 to 106. So they returned the favor. From last night when the Sixers beat him by similar scoreline. Nets beat the Hawks by 16, 116 to 100. I think Hawks were on a back-to-back. -back. And they're not as good of a team as the Brooklyn Nets. So they were leading early and then they just kind of ran out of gas towards the end. Um, matchup of the night was definitely Bucks at Rockets. Milwaukee Bucks 
continuing their winning ways. 116-109 over the Rockets in Houston. James Harden had 42 points, almost triple-double, 42-11-6. And, and Giannis Antetokounmpo, 27 points, 21 rebounds, and 5 assists. I haven't seen rebound numbers like that. 21 rebounds, that's a lot, right? I feel like that's a lot of rebounds. That's like Dennis Rodman kind of rebounding. You don't see, you don't, I don't see 20 that often. Let me open up these red, white, and blue packs too while I'm at it. Uh, Grizzlies beat the Spurs 96 to 86. Rex saying that Jordan needs to, Michael Jordan needs to unretire for the 30th time to help the Bulls. He may be more inclined to play for the Hornets. Now here's here here's what you want, Rex. Here's what we want. You want you want Jordan to sell the Hornets and for Jerry Reinsdorf to sell the Bulls. You want him to buy the Bulls. And then he you may have him you may see him unretire and play like a few minutes a night. Can you imagine? The stadium would be packed every night. Grizzlies beat the Spurs 96 to 86. Grizzlies uh, started off the season strong. They were almost unbeatable at home. Then they became the Grizzlies. But they're still uh, they're still tough at home, the Grizzlies. So they beat the Spurs 96 to 86. They could be a tough matchup play against certain teams. And the Pelicans uh 140 to 124 over the Cavs. That's a high scoring game there. Moody says only if Magic Johnson does the same for the Lakers. Magic Johnson plays a couple minutes a night. Larry Bird buys the Celtics. He plays a couple minutes a night. Should we bring the old gang back together? Get Isaiah Thomas out of the stu out of the NBA TV studios. Get him to join the Pistons. I'd see it. I'd watch. I would definitely watch. Now, for this, we're mostly looking for parallels. That's a silver emergent Trey Young. We'll hold on to that. Let's look at the Bulls' depth chart here. Yeah, you can you can slot Jordan in. We'll be like your eighth or ninth man of the game, but you get Jordan into a deal. Jordan can still shoot. Nice DeAndre Ayton silver. So the so uh, Dave Barrows gets that Trey Young emergent. DeAndre Ayton silver goes to Dave Barrows as well. He has the Suns. Nice number one overall. Yeah. Do you want Zach Levine 30 minutes a night? Or do you want Zach Levine 25 minutes a night? Jordan 5 minutes a night? Yeah, this this team's not. Yeah, Moody's saying that would be the best couple of minutes of the game for for a Bulls fan, right? You know, listen, I like I like Lori Markinen. You know, I like Wendell Carter Jr. But listen, that 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 team's not that team's not winning a lot of ball games, right? You want them to tank, right? Bulls need to tank so they can get one of those two Duke kids. And and one of those two do kids going to Chicago would be hashtag good for the hobby. You know, forget Chris Dunn, forget Zach Levine, Chandler Hutchinson, Lori Markinen. That's a decent decent core for the future, but let's be honest here. Jordan off the bench for five minutes a night. A couple minutes a quarter. How about that? A couple minutes a quarter. Last two minutes of the first quarter, have him take a take a quarter ending shot. Last two minutes of the second quarter. Nice Luca Silver. That goes to Tony Barkey and the Dallas Mavericks. Nice. Good 
Good enough to grade, maybe? I don't know, but pop that in there right away. Nice. That'll cover some spots. And let's just breeze through these red, white, and blues as well. I think that'd be great. Just get uh, just get Jordan out there last two minutes of every quarter. Have him just have him take like game winning shots and and whatnot. Oh, he'd love it too. Jordan would love it. He'd he'd love the if he you know sheds a few pounds and gets into slightly game shape. Uh, he would love schooling these young punks. All right. Um, let's see. What else should we do now? Let's go Prism Retail. There's one autograph in this one. Moody's asking, in the NBA, do teams really need to tank? Seems like they just need to hit the lottery and then trade for what they want. That's true. Yeah, Luka was traded for and wasn't the first pick. I guess you don't. because I guess you're right. Because of the lottery... Because of the lottery, I mean, you don't necessarily have to tank that much. You can always trade up if you wanted to. But I don't know. Maybe the, maybe the team that, that can get Zion or the RJ Barrett kid or the other kid on Duke, maybe they're not trading down. Maybe if he's consensus number one. I know, Rich. <laughs> We gotta, we gotta get you something here. I'll bet Larry. Uh, see, I wonder. Larry Bird had bad back issues that by the end of his, his career. That, that probably shortened his career. I don't know if he could still run around out there. Jordan, I don't think had major, not like, not like a back issue. You know what I mean? I don't know if he had anything like that. I feel like Jordan could could knock out a couple minutes a night. Yeah, that's true, Moody. Yeah, with the with the numerous trades by teams, unless you don't get the one guy each year, teams just seem to trade those picks around. They really do seem to. Well, there's so much variance. So many, so many of these kids are one and done. Yeah, bird bird trash talking is pretty legendary. Uh, right up there, bird trash talking is legendary. Jordan trash talking. Gary Payton, the glove. Malcolm Brogdon is your autograph. Milwaukee Bucks. Goes to John O. There you go, John O. Is Rodman playing in the North Korean League? He's playing in North Korean League right now, Rex. Yeah, I don't think you can catch that game. <laughs> I'll bet the uh, the kids these days they're they're trash talking on like Instagram and Twitter. That's where the trash talking happens. You know, it doesn't happen too much on the... I feel like it doesn't happen too much on the court. And if it does, then it gets too personal. I guess people don't know how to trash talk these days. Nice Dennis Smith Jr. 23. Jordan out of 42. These are exclusive to this retail edition here. DeAndre Ayton, Freshman Phenoms, Gary Trent Jr. for the Trailblazers, Silver, Green, and Shaq Daddy. All right, um, 
let's, let's keep the prism train going here. Here's the hobby edition, two autographs and then prisms. Rexing, I was watching a documentary all the players talking about what an a-hole Jordan was. Yeah, Michael Jordan was legendary jerk. You know, like... You know, but... He's Michael Jordan. I mean, he's so revered. It's like, guess what? Babe Ruth was probably a jerk too. You know, like... The, the greats, you have to have a certain kind of... Kind of jerkness in you. A-holeness in, in you. To drive yourself to be that great. Right, Moody. Yeah, I kind of, I, I kind of miss the uh, the on court. You know, I kind of miss like the on court trash talking. Yeah, Bird was a jerk too. I feel like th there's a fine art of trash talking. I feel like that art is dead. You know, like now the kids do it through the media, it's through purse, through social media, through social, you know, through through interviews, that sort of stuff. Or it just gets too personal on the court, like KG. You know what I mean? And then people take too. I don't know. Yeah, Rory, we were we were just talking about that. Looks like the Brewers are going to are going to take Grandall for a year. Yeah, it is. It's just a little bit above the qualifying offer, Moody. I I just thought that he got a 4-year deal for 60 like guaranteed from uh the Mets, I think. I'm I'm wondering why he didn't take that. Because a year, that's that's kind of like a show me deal, right? Does he does he need a show me deal for sort of an aging catcher? I thought that was interesting. Yeah, qualifying qualifying offer gets higher and higher every year. I feel like <laughs> I think qualifying was like seventeen, sixteen, seventeen million dollars. So it's only like a, a million or so over the qualifying deal, which the Dodgers offered him, and obviously no one takes the qualifying offer. Nice Michael Porter Jr. hyper. Uh, yeah, w <laughs> yeah. Grand Grandall's defensive metrics, I guess as a receiver of the ball, is pretty good. We saw his pass ball issues in the playoffs. He still has a bat. You know, he's a good dude, too. There's nothing. He's a good dude. There's Kyrie Thomas. Nice one for the Pistons. So. But if I was him, I would have taken that four-year $60 million, which was 15 a year. But you're getting guaranteed that 60 and the years. Like what? He's not going to get that after this year, unless he just goes off. But there's Fred Van Vliet. I actually thought Lou Croy would go back to would go back to the the Brewers on like a year deal for probably less than what Grandall would cost. But I don't know what that relationship is like between Lou Croy and and the Brew Crew. Rex, you think Machado's going to go back to the Orioles? <laughs> I doubt that. I think he's got the he's got a taste for the playoffs. I think he's I think he's want to go. I think he wants to go to he wants to go to a, like a playoff ready team. I think. Obviously, the money matters too. But there's Anna Obi to two ninety nine. Kevin Huda, Red Wave. Those are not numbered. And Lonnie Walker the fourth is your other autograph for the Spurs, and that'll be for Tony Tony Barkey and the Spurs. Oh, I see. Moody saying Moody speculating that that Yasmani Grandal needs that one year contract to 
keep him sharp. Otherwise, he'll slack off. He'll get too comfortable. Barkley, Hyper for the Suns. Chris Weber. Nice. And Steph Curry, 75. Michael Porter Jr. cracked ice this time out of 149. I think they call it something else, but it's cracked ice tonight. All right, two boxes of contenders coming up. We've got a full case break of contenders in the store right now. I'm not sure if it's going to, not sure if that one's going to fill tonight. But definitely keep chipping away at it because you'll still get entries in tonight's promo. All right, so two autographs per box on average. So put a, to put a bow on it, Rex, I agree with you. Michael Jordan, back on the Bulls. Two minutes a night. Let's get all the legends out of retirement. Have them play a few minutes a night. It'll be good for the fans. You know, teach the kids what it was like. Um, I don't know what's on the. Anyone know anything on the NBA trade front? I know that there was a lot of a lot of talk about Anthony Davis going to the Lakers. I don't know if the Lakers want to move guys like Josh Hart and Brandon Ingram and Kyle Kuzma and stuff like that. I'm going to require two or three of those guys. Should we get Gretzky back on the ice, Moody? I feel like Gretzky, his, his day and age, he probably hid a lot of concussions. I'll pro I, I, I really feel like... He probably buried a lot of concussions, or just they just weren't diagnosed as concussions. You know what I mean? I hear his kids are a real handful. All right, get Gretzky back on the ice. Couple, couple uh, for a shift. We've got Dante Divincenzo cracked ice, three out of twenty. I guess it's a different variation with the lower numbers. It's another buck for John O. Yeah, there's so many contract requirements, it's kind of hard to keep track of what deal could happen. Like, you can say, like, oh, this, how about this deal? And personnel-wise, you feel I feel like you can make a deal work, but then someone will be like, oh, but remember how he has, like, this mid-level exception, this or that, and, you know, you can only stretch him for this long. And I feel like being an NBA GM would be pretty fun, though. Pretty challenging, making all those numbers work. I feel like baseball would just be way too difficult. There's way too many players to keep track of. There's Tom Gugliotta. Legendary contenders out of 199 for the Suns. That goes to Dave Barrows. Baseball, so many players. So many different levels. NFL stuff too. That's a lot of personnel on an NFL team. There's Brandon Ingram to 199. There's Damian Lillard to 99. Trailblazers won tonight. Dan Smith Jr. and Russ. Rex would love to see an old-school baseball yearly game. Frank Thomas, Chipper Jr. So, Rex, you just want an old-timers game. Rex just wants a, a, a yearly old-timers game. Should they do it before the before every All-Star game? Before every All-Star game? Just have an old-timers game, bring out the old guys? I think they do that. 
The Cubs surely have an old. The Dodgers have an old timers game, or I guess they, they they don't call it an old timers game anymore. They call them uh, something a little more politically correct. <laughs> I don't know. They call it like past legends break or the game or something like that. But they they always do. Dodgers have one every year. Cubs must have one. Cubs must have enough to enough legends, former legends to field a team. Yeah, Jerry Jerry West. Moody, Moody was just saying a few moments earlier that the best GM front office man is Jerry West. Absolutely. When the, when he left the Lakers, the Lakers kind of started entering their de decline. Didn't seem obvious at the time, but eventually it happened. Um, you know, he had so much influence in the uh, so much influence in, in in the Warriors' success, and he's he's quietly had some strong influence with the Clippers now. He's with the Clippers. Hamadou Diallo, 8 out of 25 for OKC. And that's for Rick Barker. Yeah, Rick, check check the schedule. Cubs must do it. I feel like a lot of a lot of teams in the league have some kind of like former players game or old timers game or something like that. Dennis Schroeder to 199. Right. <laughs> what is what does Jerry West see that we that's what makes him Jerry West? Court vision back in the day and he's got vision in the business world too, in the basketball business world. I'm with I'm with uh I'm with Rich. Cl just clone all the dead guys, bring them back. Alright, Rich, I like that. Clone the dead guys and bring them back for some for some clone games. Legendary contenders. Steven Jackson. Pacers. That is last spot mojo, David Barrows. They do have a Field of Dreams game in the summer out there, Rex. When I visit there, I learned that they have, like, during the summer. It's great for the kids, I guess. A ghost old-timers game or something like that. So they, they all dress up in those old wool uniforms and everything. And they, like, play, like, a few innings. And they come out of the cornfield and all that. All right, and it looks like that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Another great five-box mixer in the books. Thanks for joining, everybody. I'm sure there'll be more mixers like this uh, in the near future, so keep an eye out on jazbeescasebreaks.com, and we'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.